Uh, first of all, I want you to see if you notice a pattern here. Uh, I'm going to show you something, and I want to see if uh, see, see if you can sense some consistency over time here. I'm going to put a, a date stamp in the corner of the screen so you can see when all of these happened. But see if you can pick up on the pattern among them. Watch. After ascertainment has been had that the certificates are authentic and correct in form, the tellers will count and make a list of the votes cast by the electors. After ascertainment has been had that the certificates are authentic and correct in form, the tellers will count and make a list of the votes cast by the electors. After ascertainment has been made that the certificates are authentic and correct in form, the tellers will count and make a list of the votes cast by the electors. After ascertaining that certificates are regular in form and authentic, the tellers will announce the votes cast by the electors. After ascertainment has been had that the certificates are authentic and correct in form, the tellers will count and make a list of the votes cast by the electors. After ascertainment has been had that certificates are authentic and correct in form, the tellers will count and make a list of the votes cast by the electors. After the ascertainment has been had that the certificates are authentic and correct in form, the tellers will count and make a list of the votes cast by the electors. Notice a the theme? It's a script, right? It's always the same. Every four years, whoever is acting as the president of the Senate, whoever the vice president is, it comes time every four years for them to open up and count all the electoral votes. And it's always the same. I mean, with, you know, one or two little word shifts here and there, it's always the same thing. After ascertaining that the certificates are authentic and correct, the tellers will announce the votes cast by the elector. They say the exact same thing every four years. The words shift like a hair or two in either direction, but it's always the same every four years. Until this last time. This last time, for the first time ever, started off just like it always does, but then it careened off in a whole new direction we've never heard before. Watch. After ascertaining that the certificates are regular in form and authentic, the tellers will announce the votes cast by the electors for each state, beginning with Alabama, which the parliamentarians advise me is the only certificate of vote from that state and purports to be a return from the state that has annexed to it a certificate from an authority of that state purporting to appoint or ascertain electors. What was all that at the end? All that stuff that the parliamentarian has advised you, that was all new. As far as we can tell, nothing like that has ever been said at any one of these things. But Mike Pence, when he opened the electoral votes, January 6th last year, he added that whole new bit. The parliamentarian has advised me there's only one document that counts as a certificate of vote from the, a state, and that certificate, he says, has annexed to it a certificate from an authority of that state. That's all new language that we've never heard before in this context. Vice presidents always say the exact same thing when it comes to time for them to announce the Electoral College votes. But when Mike Pence did it, he added this whole new complicated clause saying the parliamentarian had advised him that only one certificate of electors could be counted from any one state. It, it had to have the explicit blessing of an authority of that state. That was all new. And, and it, you know, there's been some minor drama around the Electoral College before in previous elections, but no vice president ever before felt the need to get a parliamentarian's ruling, basically giving him a clear legal way to assert that he doesn't have to count any forged fake set of electors that might have been sent into him alongside the real ones. No vice president has ever before had to get some sort of language from the parliamentarian explaining that if two sets of electors were sent in from a particular state, he was only going to have to count the one. But Mike Pence had to do that. Which means Vice President Mike Pence knew in advance of January 6th that Republicans in multiple states had sent in forged fake electoral votes, documents purporting to be the real electoral votes from those states, even though they were not real. We know he knew about it 
because we can see he had to maneuver in advance of actually conducting the vote count that day to get the parliamentarian to give him that language so he could justify not counting the fake votes. Reporter Kyle Cheney at Politico.com gets credit for catching this uh, and catching it at, a, at an auspicious time. It was 2.55 in the morning on, on the night of January 6th last year. 2.55 a.m. January 7th, this is the night after the Capitol had been attacked, Kyle Cheney that night made note of how Pence's language seemed to be different than all previous vice presidents had used for every previous electoral vote count. Mr. Cheney was totally right. It's totally obvious once you lay down what Pence said. All that extra verbiage that Pence added alongside the very austere, almost exactly unchanging language from all the other times the vice president has done the vote count in modern times. Reporter Kyle Cheney figured that out based on the change language that Pence used. Figured out that, that, that Vice President Pence's office must have worked with the Senate parliamentarian ahead of time to head off this stunt, to head off this part of the plot, to head off what Republicans were trying to do, sending in these forged electoral college votes, which they did, in fact, not just fill out and keep they filled them out, signed them, and sent them into the National Archives and to the United States Senate as if they were real. 